Thank you, Keith. Okay, so so I'm David Fitzgerald, the data manager for um, Elsh, Elsh, how do I pronounce it? That's the um, Australian Longitudinal Study on Women's Health, and I'll be talking about the accessibility issues for this. So I'm, I'm going to first of all explain and give background to the our study, and then talk about the um, accessibility issues and try and relate them to the um, Fair Data principles, which um, which I've just listed here, and these are the exact ones which um, Keith showed earlier. So I won't go through them in detail, but I'll try and relate these to our study. Okay, so what is the um, the Elsh study? It's a um, it's a collaborative effort um, or project from the two universities of um, Newcastle and Queensland. And in fact, the two universities are sort of there, sort of related to um, keeping the sensitive data, which I'll talk about briefly. Um, it's one of Australia's longest running longitudinal epidemiological studies, so it's been going since 1996 and is ongoing and we we hope to go uh, go further into the future. It's funded by the Australian Government. So we started off with over 40,000 women and a few years ago we got a new cohort of, um, of 17,000 women and I'll show you the four cohorts we work with. Here they are. So the four cohorts are age-based based, and, and we define them in the years of birth. So you can see there's one, the, the oldest one born 20, 1921 to 26 and there's three other ones of various ages and um, as you can imagine each cohort has their own health um, issues and um, that's what we're interested in and, and indeed the Australian government is interested in. So what are we collecting and our methodology? So health issues and in particular mental, physical, reproductive, social health, there's more. Um, and also life transitions, so the different ages of women obviously going through different life transitions, life events, and things which are related to health and empl employment, health service use, and um, and more. And I'll, I'll just mention a bit of data linkage. I don't want to stress this because it's a big area with lots of issues, but we have actually linked our survey data with some administrative data sets. And in fact, they're listed there, the MBS, PBS, and cancer registries and admitted patient hospital and, and admitted patient hospital. The, these are, the, the linkage are particularly sensitive and, and we treat them quite differently in how we make the data accessible. So the data is used um, extensively and, and, and particularly more than 680 peer-reviewed papers have been published using our data and also we, um, we report back to the government frequently and national health policies have been informed by reports and use of our data. Okay, so I'll go on to the um, sort of aspects of accessibility and, and see how it relates to our data. Um, so that one there about being retrieval by an identifier using standard communications protocol. So all the data sets from our survey which are analyzed and are used have, a, have an identifier, the same identifier, and it's, I just stress here, it, it's de-identified but with a consistent new identifier and that's across all surveys. So anyone using our survey data, I'll just put the caveat as long as it's not part of the link to data, but anyone using this uh, survey data has one and only one um, identifier for use. And we say this has been de-identified because it, um, there are no personal names on the data, no addresses, no postcodes, no dates of birth, although the, the year and month of birth are actually given. So obviously to do things like um, age analysis and any, they are the main ones, but any other data which is deemed to be identifiable identifiable is stripped off. The identifier is, we call it the ID alias, it's actually not the administrative ID which um, a respondent would see or somebody working in an office in Newcastle who's um, um, communicating with our respondents. They would not know what the identifier, the analyzable identifier is, they would have a different administrative ID. And just on this point, um, any small cell sizes which we think are identifiable are sort of grouped into larger groups and for example country of birth we, we sort of group into broad sort of continental um, geographical 
areas to avoid particular countries of birth come, coming up. And anyone using the data has to, well, along with a number of other um, conditions, um, they, they must not identify respondents, which although we, we go to lengths to sort of make that very difficult, it's, it's conceivable that something could come up, but they, they promise and sign that they will not identify respondents if they ever had that possibility. Okay, um, so I was also just sort of asked to sort of look at legal and eth ethical issues. So um, we, we do have a legal contract with the Australian Government Department of Health, and the fact that this is ongoing, re um, and it's we 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 didn't get a 20-year one. Um, we we uh, regularly updated and um, short-term contracts, and also the ethics ethics committees from the two universities there have approved our usage and in fact every time we do a new survey because it's longitudinal every year we're actually going back to at least one of the cohorts to survey them each new survey which is not not identical to previous surveys is subject to ethics committee um, oversight and approval yeah, so that's um, so we, we do have extensive um, legal and ethical issues there so I, I want to talk about how actually um, a investigator or a reuser would um, would get access to our survey data. Um, so they, um, and, and as we explained, this is all on the website, but um, they, were, they must first complete an expression of interest form. And um, in particular, they'd say who they are, why they um, are a sort of a serious researcher, what, what they want to, to find out from the data. And, and that would be reviewed by our um, Publications sub sub studies. That's the BSA committee, and uh, and, um, and if and then if it is if if their EOI expression of interest is, is approved, um, they will sign confidentiality data use doc documents st statements before receiving the de, de identified data, and they also must um, report back to us about their progress, and they um, we we expect um, some some sort of some immediate work on on the data and uh, for them to continue with that access but um but if their expression of interest is successful the data are actually sent to them and um, this is this is an area work which I'm direct, directly involved in um, and so we we do it before sending the data encrypt it we use 7z 7z software um, and that's compresses it as well. We use the AARNet cloud store system to send data to the um, approved researchers, reusers, and an email was sent to them as well um, with, with passwords, but also to establish contact um, with the, the management here with, so if we, for future correspondence. And I'll just put a note there about, we have linked data, but we, we never send this out actually. And anyone using this has to actually come to our offices or, or actually there is a the Sax Institute Shore facility which also can have it but we don't own the, the linked data so, and we've agreed not to send it anywhere. Um, so public metadata so this, this refers back to protocol being open so we have a website which lists the the above procedure in fact that I went through but also has a lot of metadata on on it including a data dictionary which lists all the variables and the many data sets we have a data dictionary supplement which is a, a description of the frequently used variables with some some detail a data map that shows how the variables are used across the different surveys and cohorts when I say different surveys the longitudinal we have up to eight surveys for, um, for some of our cohorts and so each one is deemed a different survey and has slight differences from other surveys. We have a list of all the variables used in spreadsheets for easy access. We also have data books which list the um, essentially the frequency summaries of the variables, the questionnaires that, this, that the respondents filled in, technical reports which we produce which sort of go into detail on many of our reports and a frequently asked question page on on exactly that and so making metadata accessible in fact we make data although our data is not completely open we, we do want to make it accessible and we do archive both metadata and the data and we do that annually and with the Australian Data Archives 
and although they are not releasing it yet, the, the, the plan is in the future for them to take over release of our data, perhaps when we're not doing it ourselves, um, and, um, and that, that will be a role to keep our data sort of useful and used in the long term. And um, yeah, so that's what I've got to say. I'd just like to um, acknowledge um, the, 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 specifically the, the women in our study who, um, who fill in this, the surveys and of course the, the Government Department of Health for funding this and the Universities of Queensland and New South Wales for um, doing the job. So thank you, that's what I have to say.